There can often be disagreement and confusion about whether a song is in 3-4 time or 6-8 time. Now later in this video I'll play some examples of songs that are either in 3-4 or 6-8 and you'll have an opportunity to guess which one you think it is. But before we do that let me explain what the difference actually is between 3-4 and 6-8. If a song is in 3-4 time it means that there are three quarter notes in each bar of the music. But in 6-8 time, the signature is telling us that there are six eighth notes in each bar. Now this is where the confusion arises. 3-4 has three quarter notes in a bar, right? But those three quarter notes will also fit into a bar of 6-8. Likewise, 6 eighth notes can also fit into a bar of 3-4. So what's the difference? If a piece of music in 3-4 can always fit into a bar of 6-8, then isn't one of the signatures just redundant? Well, no. And there's actually a clue to why in the way that I've written these 6 eighth notes out. Yes, both a bar of 3-4 and a bar of 6-8 can contain 6 eighth notes. But the difference is in how we group them. See, one aspect of time signatures that people often miss is the difference between simple and compound time. Simple time is when each strong beat of the bar divides into two equally spaced eighth notes. The eighth notes are grouped into sets of two. 3-4 is what we call simple triple time, i.e. it has three strong beats in the bar and each of those strong beats divides down into two eighth notes. The alternative to simple time is compound time. Compound time is when each strong beat of the bar instead divides down into three equally spaced eighth notes. The eighth notes are grouped into sets of three. 6-8 is what we call compound duple time i.e. it has two strong beats in a bar, with each of those strong beats dividing down into three eighth notes. I'll say that again, 6-8 has two strong beats in a bar, not six, but two. So even though any piece of music written in 3-4 could technically be forced into a 6-8 time signature, the way 3-4 and 6-8 actually sound is very different. So what do they actually sound like? Well, 3-4 has very much got a waltz feel to it, with a clear sense of three beats in the bar. You fill up my senses like night in a forest. Six eight, on the other hand, feels like it's swinging from side to side, like a pendulum. A house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. Everybody cries. Everybody. Wise man. A song that directly contrasts the difference between 3-4 and 6-8 is America from Leonard Bernstein's West Side Story. America jumps back and forth from 6-8 to 3-4, creating a sense of the tempo getting faster and slower as we're jumping between having two strong beats in the bar and three strong beats in the bar. Another thing to bear in mind is when 6-8 is played particularly slowly, it can start to sound like 3-4, because our ear can't really latch onto the two beats in every bar because they're moving too slowly. For example, Gravity by John Mayer is in 6-8 time, so we should feel it as having two beats in each bar like this. Gravity is working against me. But as you may have found just then, because it's so slow, our ear can instead begin to latch onto the eighth notes instead, so we hear the music like this. Gravity. It's working. 
working against me. Likewise, if a song in 3-4 is played at a fast tempo, it can start to sound like it's in 6-8. For example, I've seen differing opinions on whether America by Simon and Garfunkel is in 3-4 or 6-8. Personally, I can see a case for both. The relatively fast tempo means that you can feel it as having three beats in a bar like this. I've got some real estate here in my bag. Or you can feel it as having two beats in the bar, like this. I've got some real estate here in my bag. So whether a song is in 3-4 or 6-8 can sometimes be up for debate, particularly if that song is at a significantly slow or fast tempo. So now that we've gone over the differences between 3-4 and 6-8, I'm going to play you 10 examples of songs which are either in 3-4 or 6-8 and I want you to guess which time signature they're in. Time after time, I've done my sentence. While geese that fly with the moon on their wings, these are a few of my favorite things. While geese that fly with the moon on their wings, these are a few of my favorite things. At break of day, when that man drove away, I was waiting. Let me know in the comments how many you got right. So that's the difference between 3-4 and 6-8. But what would a piece of music sound like if it was in both 3-4 and 6-8 at the same time? In other words, what if one part had three strong beats in the bar, whilst another part had only two? Well, this would be a 3 against 2 polyrhythm, and is exactly what happens in Radiohead's Daydreaming. The right hand of the piano is playing in 3-4 and the left hand is playing in 6-8. In other words, for every three beats in the right hand, the left hand is playing two beats. Of course, as is the case with all polyrhythms, we don't tend to use different time signatures on the page at once. So although one part of the music has a 6-8 feel and the other has a 3-4 feel, we write it all down in one unified time signature, in this case 3-4. Now there's just a couple more common points of confusion with 3-4 and 6-8 that I wanted to cover before the end of this video. The first of which is, what's the difference between 6-8 and 12-8? Well, whereas 6-8 is compound duple time, so it's got two strong beats in a bar, each dividing down into three eighth notes, 12-8 is compound quadruple time, so it has four strong beats in a bar, 
and once again they divide down into three eighth notes. Now at faster tempos, 12-8 is effectively a swung or shuffled 4-4. But at slower tempos, 12-8 is effectively the same thing as two bars of 6-8. So sometimes the same piece of music can be written down in 6-8 or 12-8. For example, I would consider Lou Reed's Perfect Day to be in 6-8 time. However, I've seen other people transcribe this song in 12-8. And it doesn't really make much difference. To me, it feels a bit unusual to have such long bars, but maybe that's just me. Different musicians will sometimes have different preferences on which signature to use. And lastly, I wanted to discuss the difference between 3-4 and 9-8. What time signature would you say this song is in? And we drank our sons of youth, still crazy after all. And what about this one? Now is love sweet love. It's the only thing. Well, if you said 3-4, then that is technically correct. However, you could have also said 9-8. These two songs are examples of what's often called a jazz waltz. In other words, they're in swung 3-4 time. So to notate this, we could write them down in 3-4 like this, but with an instruction to swing the rhythm. Is love sweet love? It's the only thing. However, alternatively, we could write them down as 9 8. 9 8 and 3 4 both have three strong beats in the bar, but whereas in 3 4 these strong beats divide down into two eighth notes, in 9 8 these three beats divide down into three eighth notes, and dividing down into three eighth notes gives it a swing feel. Is love sweet love? It's the only thing. I must note though that in practice, songs with a jazz waltz feel like these will generally be notated in 3 4 time with an instruction to swing the rhythm, as they're easier to read this way and also allow the performer more freedom over how they swing the rhythm. 9 8 used as compound triple time, i.e., three strong beats in the bar dividing down into three eighth notes is usually only found in classical music. In pop, rock and jazz, if you come across a 9-8 time signature, it will instead usually mean that the song is in an odd or complex meter. Because although in 9-8 we can group the 9 8 notes into three equally spaced beats, we can also group them into uneven groups to make 9-8 work as an odd time signature. Sting's I Hung My Head groups the 9 8 notes into a group of four and a group of five. Early one morning, with time to kill, I borrowed James so 9-8 can be the compound equivalent to 3-4, or it can be an odd time signature. So hopefully that's improved your confidence with the difference between 3-4 and 6-8. At the end of the day, any piece of music in 3-4 could be written down or interpreted in 6-8, and vice versa. It just comes down to the way that you want to feel the music, the way that the pulse is meant to be recognised. And on occasion, some pieces of music will do just as well in either signature. If you can think of any other examples of songs in 3-4 or 6-8, then do leave them in the comments down below. And I'll leave you today with a piece of music I've written that switches between 3-4 and 6-8. And thank you as always to all of the wonderful people who support me on Patreon, including the names you see on screen right now, and Andre Sainz Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andrew Sussman, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Olivella, Colin Aiken, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, David Rivers, Donald Howard, Dr. Darren Wicks, Elena Skorchenko, Esben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, F.D. Hodor, Yul Molotona, Hamish Brocklebank, Hugo Miller, James K.O., J.A. Kokensparger, John Dye, Justin Vigger, 
Lavender Monroe, Mark Height, Mark Ziegenhagen, Max O'Keefe, Melody Composer Squared, Melody Schonert, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Nathan Lawrence, Nathaniel Park, Paul Miller, Paul Hazel, Peter Dunphy, Piotr Murphsky, Roger Clay, Sam Lynn, Scott Fenley, Sean Kennedy, Steve Daly, Stephen Lazaro, Tim Beaker, Toma Aharoni, Trisha Adams, Tim Payne, Toot, Victor Levy, Vidad Flowers, Vladimir Kodakov, and Volti.